Welcome to Men, Sex, and Tantra. Discover where your parents, porn, and religion never taught you about being a man and having extraordinary sex. Get ready to have your mind blown and your world rocked. Hey everybody, <laughs> it's Tanya and Michael here, and <laughs> I'm laughing because our topic today is should a man lead in a relationship, and of course I'm leading in the intro, so how do we really feel about this, Michael? I just thank you for being such an extraordinary <laughs> guide for this exploration. <laughs> I'm thrilled to be able to follow your direction, Tanya, please, well, where should we start? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Do you get this question asked a lot? Uh, <laughs> only in the concept of, or only in the context of toxic Facebook discussions, <laughs> not in real life. Did you ever see the, the Zach, the Zach interview? That I did. Had? Yeah. <laughs> That's a perfect example of leading from the bottom. <laughs> Topping from the bottom. Yes. My favorite. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, Hmm. All right. So should a man lead in relationship? It, like with all this polarity, uh, coaching and talking and stuff going on and all this. And of course, um, it, it seems like that's what men are supposed to do. That's the message I keep getting is that men are supposed to lead. Yeah. Uh, so lead me. <laughs> I, if you are in a relationship in which uh, the woman believes that you are supposed to lead and you are not leading, then that is going to be a relationship that contains within it friction. How, so just, just keep that in mind. Uh, yeah. <laughs> however, um, I, there are very few circumstances in which I think that relational truths are universal. And uh, there are some relationships where the woman uh, actually leads and uh, more often than the man and everybody is really good with it. Um, but if you are like the majority of people, it's likely that there are some times where one of you takes the lead, sometimes where the other takes the lead and sometimes where really nobody's leading. <laughs> <laughs> or you're fighting all the time because you're both trying to lead in this different direction. Oh yeah, that too. You're yeah. both trying to lead in different directions. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. That's such a, you know, in my, it, it's funny. I grew up in a, um, my, my dad was a really, really powerful man and my mother was a really powerful woman and it'd be hard to decide who was actually leading in that relationship, but the way they did it flowed. So mm. they had either an agreement or an unspoken, a, a spoken agreement or an unspoken agreement on who was leading what, when, and how. And um, both playing into their strengths. Yes. And ideally what you want in, in any relationship, leading or not, is attunement, right? Yeah. You want to be so like, like dialed in to what the other person is doing that when they start to lead without question, you just, you go, you go along with it unless you see a problem in which case you would redirect. Right. Yeah. But it's this, this ability to be so in touch with what is present between the two of you that the whole like, concept of should goes out the window and it just becomes a dance and exploration. Yeah. I had a client once who said, um, he, he would do the bookkeeping for the company and I, and he, and he wasn't good at it. And so we would talk about that in coaching, like, oh, I need to get better at this, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, is your wife really good at it? And he goes, oh yeah, she's really awesome at it. And I said, why isn't she doing it? And he said, well, because then I'd lose her respect as a man. And I said, well, you don't think you're losing her respect as a man by not doing this well? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So there's a perfect pragmatic example of something like that where societally is saying you should be doing this as a man, even though it wasn't the strength and they would have been better off financially and everything else if she was doing it. Right. Yeah. So what happens? I mean, if somebody was asking that question, should the man lead in a relationship? And if it was a man who was asking me, um, I would say, um, one, do you feel capable of leading? Great question. Right. And <laughs> secondly, do you need to lead in order to feel good about yourself? Right. And yeah. 
those are uh, two two important questions to ask because I, I do feel that many of the people who have the approach that a man should lead uh, have that because if they're not, they don't feel good about themselves or right. their woman doesn't feel good about them. Right. So validation, yeah. leading from, because of validation. Um, it does work in some contexts like uh, the promise keepers. So if you go in like the whole construct, the promise keepers are a Christian group that basically the man leads, he he does all the stuff, the woman does the home stuff, but all the decisions come from him. You know, he mm -hmm. makes the decisions. And because everybody's entered into this agreement prior to even getting in the relationship, you know, that's the way it is, seems to work well and actually creates less confusion because everybody knows their role. So maybe this is really about, like we say, the agreements and the roles that you're comfortable with or have expectations around. Absolutely. I mean, that sounds like it's basically just a Christian version of a BDSM relationship with a power dynamic. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. Sure. Absolutely. So what is being led? Do women like being led? Um, what I find is that if women are in feeling like they need to be in control, like they're scared, initially a scared person, and they feel like they need to control everything, otherwise it's too scary and they get anxiety and it's out of control, then have they, they might want the man to lead because they want to break from where they are, but they are not able as well to let them lead because they don't do it right. Yeah. And so what happens then? So now you've got a woman who desperately wants her man to lead because she wants a break and, and doesn't want to be in that position all the time. And she f doesn't feel sexy because she's always under pressure and da, 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 da. And yet when the man wants to step up or take charge or do something, she tells him he doesn't do it right and he can't do it right. And she criticizes him and does all that. So in that instance, that's confusing. And a lot of men say to me, yeah, I don't know what to do with this because yes, I feel like I should be leading or she wants me to lead. But when I try to lead, then she doesn't let me or cuts me down. What do I do? Yeah. What happens then? And I mean, I will say there's probably times in a woman's life when it's very advantageous to have a man who's capable of leading. For example, during pregnancy, you know, <laughs> it's very nice to be supported during those times to feel like you're held. Right. And I do believe that, um, you know, women in a relationship do want to feel held. Uh, but how they actually feel held is another question entirely. Right. Because sometimes they feel held by leading. And sometimes they feel held by being supported in their own power, right? Which is uh, two two different things. So the 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 desire is generally to feel to feel that, but the strategy to achieve it uh, can differ. Well, I love to be led, yeah, by a man who's more competent or as competent as I am. Yeah. <laughs> if he isn't, then no. <laughs> I think, and I think that goes back to what you were saying. Yeah, like to to encourage each other to lead in the areas of your competence. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And then you know, so if a woman picks a man who's like out there, she sees him like leading in business or leading in this, and then in the relationship, she tries to take charge and not let him run his strengths, then it's going to be catastrophic. Um, if a man comes into a relationship and his idea, because he's read or Googled or taken too many polarity, whatever, is, is that he's going to control everything by leading, because leading is not control. Correct. But yet it's posed as that. You're going to control this. You're going to make the decisions about that. You're going to do that. Well, let's, yeah, let's talk about the difference between leadership and control then. <laughs> right. So defining leading to me, leading is by uh, inspiration and leading is by understanding the people that I'm around. It's not a carte blanche, I'm going to control your life type of thing. Yeah, the way that I like to, uh, like to frame it is think of a boss in a job, right? Uh, and think of the worst boss you ever had. Chances are that worst boss tried to lead by instilling fear in their subordinates, tried to lead by making strict rules and, you know, determining who followed those rules to the letter and using a system of reward and punishment. Micromanagement. Chances, yeah, yeah, chances are that they got angry when things weren't followed, right? 
Um, so that's one paradigm that people think is leadership, but is is actually control, which is more or less toxic and, and can border on abusive. Yeah. Um, in our, in a good leader is going to exhibit way more curiosity than they exhibit, you know, trying to make things fit, right? Because the, a good leader is going to be able to see the way that the whole fits together and will spend much more time listening and observing how that is than they are trying to fit it into their preconceived notion of how it should be. Um, 100%. 100%. So uh, the, the way I would say it is um, if leadership is about, is about listening and then making subtle adjustments and allowing things to organically unfold in the way that they're supposed to, um, then really, I mean, everybody ideally in a relationship is leading at all times, <laughs> if we look at it that way. Yeah, exactly. And the whole idea of uh, curiosity and asking questions is I think good leadership. A good leader yeah. looks to what is going on and what people's strengths are and actually helping them develop those strengths. It's yes. not, you know, if a good if a leader thinks that it's all about them staying in control all the time and them having to do everything, then they're not really good at leading. Right. Uh, really it is about how to uh, help people step up, how to inspire people to be uh, to grow and to do more of what they're good of and to let them do that and see what kind of things develop from that and to take feedback. That's yeah. a good leader. So Exactly. My favorite question um, is, that I, I love to ask in, in these sorts of situations is, um, you know, I've noticed this, that, and the other thing doesn't, doesn't tend to work or you don't like it. Um, help me learn how to win with you. That's beautiful. I... I love that question. I believe if you set if you help you set each other up for success, yes. Now you're leading well. Mm -hmm. Asking that question, absolutely, because getting clarity about things is important in leading. Mm -hmm. Right? So what what is it that you're good at? What is it that I'm good at? What do we want to do with that combination? Yeah, absolutely. So should you be leading in a relationship? Yes. However, <laughs> you should be a good leader. Yeah. So learning to lead is uh, what you really need to be focused on versus being in control and being the only one to make a decision and doing things because you think if you're not doing it, somehow somebody will respect you less. All of these things are not leadership at all. They're and I'd like to take a moment and, and speak to what I feel is the root of a lot of that um, narrative where women should be led, men should lead sort of a thing. It, it is a, in my opinion, my less than humble opinion, <laughs> it's just a glorified big daddy complex, right? Oh. It's, it's like, I have not felt held by the masculine. I've not felt his strength and his power and leadership. And when I find the right man who's able to show up in these ways that I've longed for my whole life, then finally, I shall be fulfilled. Then finally, I shall have the relational reality that I've always longed for. And when people actually go their lives looking for that and they think they've finally found it, nine times out of 10, what it actually turns into is an abusive relationship. Yeah. <laughs> I concur. Yes. If you are missing, uh, you know, what's, what's, you're being told you're missing the masculine, you're missing the man to take you on that adventure and that leadership and all that stuff. And I concur that that is daddy. Like, absolutely. Like, you know, looking for that safe place again, that's all about that. Because when you give away your, um, your power, literally like that, because you're missing something in yourself, or you're just tired, or you're just scared, or you're just whatever it is that you want to place responsibility for your life in somebody else's hands, because you can't do it yourself, or you're worn out doing it yourself, then it's you need to come back to yourself and work on that and stop trying to lay all that stuff on somebody else. And I think the Neo Tantra world is like <sighs> missing the mark on that so hard. And there's so much abuse that I get called about because somebody surrendered because they can't surrender until the person does this or that, uh, making your safe place or leading you or whatever. Um, 
you need more boundaries. You need more self-healing before you ever walk into that arena. Tanya, I keep thinking one of these days that I, I've got to just take a stand to disagree with you, even if even if I don't disagree. <laughs> Uh, so, cause so far, so far we've been agreeing and I, I vow to fix that in our, in our <laughs> next episode. We have a vow to find something we disagree about and squabble. Yes. Yeah. Let's squabble more. Let's squabble. Um, awesome. So yeah, if you guys get sick about us agreeing about everything, go ahead and drop some topic uh, down there that you think we might disagree about. If you can figure one out, we're happy to get on there and check it out and see. Um, I don't know. We'll probably find somebody that you really like that I can't stand. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll throw some of those names out uh, on our topic sheet and we'll see. <laughs> Sounds good into that anyway thanks everybody for being here uh, like i said anytime you ever want to you know share this hit the share subscribe button and you want to talk to one of us check out our links down there and uh we're we're, we're pretty cool to talk to i think we're kind of just this way i don't know maybe we're not cool to you but that's okay too right this is a shell of a person i put on my human suit before this show um uh, I only appear this way for the 20 minutes that we're speaking together and the rest of the time I have green skin. Yes. Yeah. And it's very exciting green skin. So you might get to see him that way too. Yep. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye.